Hi, I'm Susan Capestro. Today, I'll show you how to play a piece. After you play this piece, you'll be able to play Summertime by George Gershwin. First, some fun with chord voicings, a staple of the jazz pianist pantry. With a little practice, voicings are simple. You take the notes of a chord and rearrange them so they sound a different way. I'll show you three that are used in this arrangement. First, the minor sixth chord. Step by step, here's how this particular voicing of this chord is formed. I'll start with the A minor triad, add my sixth, and then since the fifth is not as important as some of the other notes, I'm gonna take that out because we don't need four notes in our chord. Then, since this is sort of low and clunky sounding, I'm going to take the C out and put it on top instead. Now this chord is very big, so you need a big hand to play it. So if you'd like, you can just play the bottom note and then the top two notes separately, or you can pull it upside down like that, or you can arpeggiate it. In fact, I'll do that the second time through when I play the piece for you. The second chord voicing is a little bit more complicated. It's a D7 chord, a dominant seventh chord, but because this is jazzy, it's extended. So I'll start with my root three, five, and seven, and then I'll add nine and sharp eleven and thirteen to it. Very jazzy sounding. So instead of stacking thirds like that, I'm going to put the fifth on the top and then put a perfect fourth below that, which happens to be the ninth of the chord, a perfect fourth below that, which happens to be the thirteenth or the sixth of the chord. I'll leave the third of the chord, which is a perfect fourth below that, and so far I have all perfect fourths. Then this bottom note is a fourth, but it's not a perfect fourth because it has to be C natural or else it wouldn't fit in with D7. So, I have that. And now I hear you thinking, well, where's the root of this chord? So, I'll just put it on the bottom like that. Or, you can do it the opposite way. Or, if you're playing with a bass player, you don't have to worry about playing the root, because the bass player will probably play that. So, the next chord is another dominant chord. It's a G7, but it's actually a G9, because it's extended. And it's actually a G7 sus4 because it has the fourth in it instead of the third. So I'll start by building a G7, the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth. Then I'm going to take out the three and put in four instead. And there's a lot of notes, so I'll take out the fifth because we don't really need that. And look what I'm left with. This chord, oh, I could put the C on the top. And then, it's really simple to see that this is just an F major triad with a G in the bass. When you go to homemusiclessons.com, you'll see a PDF download that explains all the steps of forming these chord voicings. In Pokey Stroll, there's another example of a minor six chord another example of the dominant seventh chord stacked with fourths instead of thirds. And there's also another example of a dominant ninth chord with a sus. So see if you can find them yourself in Pokey Stroll. Now I'll play Pokey Stroll for you. And like I said before, if you can play Pokey Stroll, then you will be able to play Summertime by George Gershwin. Try it, it's a lot of fun.
You can find both Pokey Stroll and the sheet of chord voicings and how to build them at homemusiclessons.com. I hope you enjoyed the video.